everyone wants to get a cloud DevOps job these days, but it might not be for everyone. There might be some reasons you might hate going into cloud and DevOps. In this video, I'm going to go over those factors. All right, factor number one, you'd hate going into cloud DevOps if you cannot adapt down the line. Cloud DevOps is not a static thing. Unlike the legacy technologies uh, like mainframe, because I used to work in mainframe, or even Java, where you can learn those technologies once in super deep level, and then you would be good for multiple years. Uh, for example, with mainframe, you learn COBOL, JCL, Rex, vSAM, DB2, and you're pretty much set for the life. Things don't change much. But with cloud and DevOps, you study up right now, and then you get into a job, things are going to change very frequently. Uh, for example, when cloud started, it was just S3 and EC2 and VPC. But then cloud databases came in, uh, serverless came in, then Kubernetes, Elastic Compute Service, AIML services, uh, even within S3, a lot of new features came in. And the same thing for DevOps, uh, it all started with uh, Jenkins CI and CD. But if you look around you, a lot of new tools have come in for Kubernetes. We have GitOps taking over traditional DevOps. We have other tools like GitLab, uh, Spinnaker, uh, even Jenkins. We have Jenkins X, uh, Blue Ocean, etc. Uh, so you constantly have to upskill yourself. Uh, if you are someone who just wants to study hard one time to get through the interview and then get the job, and then you just prefer to use that knowledge to do your job, and you are very resistant to <laughs> learning and upskilling yourself, then cloud DevOps might not be the right choice for you. Second reason you might hate going to cloud is if you assume learning cloud will make you overnight IT expert. So at the end of the day, IT concepts are IT concepts. Databases are databases. Uh, if you know database, then that's good even in data center or in the cloud. Relational database concepts don't change. Non-relational databases or NoSQL database concepts stays the same. If you already know MongoDB, then you would have a much ease taking over DynamoDB. Another example is API. Uh, if you know how to build API, test API, write a Swagger file, and then even if you migrate or learn cloud DevOps, those concepts stay the same. You can define API using Swagger file in API Gateway, Apigee, or whichever cloud platform you choose. Uh, but if you don't know those fundamental concepts and you think you are just gonna go into cloud DevOps and suddenly you will become an expert, that is not the case. So at the end of the day, you still need to learn the IT concepts. Uh, so if you think, you will be an expert on those areas. If you just move to cloud and DevOps, then you probably hate going to cloud DevOps. Reason number three you'd hate going to cloud DevOps is if you think getting a cert will get you a really high paying job and make you an expert in cloud DevOps. Certifications are good. I always recommend for folks to get them uh, because if you're applying for a job, and other candidates don't have a cert and you do have a cert, uh, that will get recruiter attention and get you to the interview. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, most of the certs on the cloud, uh, from the clouds, are multiple choice question. Uh, so you can just get a dump from somewhere, even though I don't recommend it, and pass the exam without actually trying anything. Uh, so in the interview, if you get questions and follow up deep dives, uh, you will struggle. So my recommendation is get the cert in the area you are interested in. Uh, if you are interested in uh, DevOps, get the DevOps or sysadmin uh, cert from AWS. If you're if you thinking about AWS, uh, if you want to be an architect, get the solutions architect cert. Uh, if you are into security, get the security specialty, uh, machine learning, big data, etc. You got the idea. Uh, but also try the important pieces. So when you go through any good course, the course should point out what areas are more important than the others, and then make sure uh, you, you study those a little bit better, you do a little bit of hands-on. Uh, for example, for Solutions Architect Associate course, um, 
It's very important to know the VPC concepts that a lot of people ignore. Uh, so it's important that you try those out, uh, you, you study about subnets, availability zone, public subnet, private subnet, what makes them public versus private, uh, how the network traffic flows, uh, can, how do, what is the internal load balancer, external load balancer, application load balancer versus network load balancer, load balancer versus API gateway, uh, you got the idea. The next reason you would head going to cloud DevOps, if you think everything that you need in the exact way is available on the internet. So you will face challenges in Cloud DevOps. Let's say we're creating a, a pipeline with Jenkins and GitOps uh, to deploy something into Kubernetes, and then you face an error, or maybe uh, you want to know the whole thing end to end. So with legacy technologies, uh, let's say with Java mainframe, since things don't change much, uh, you search Stack Overflow or you Google search, and the exact thing might come up. With Cloud DevOps, if you expect that you will just search uh, that exact DevOps pipeline, you will not get it. So you have to have a little bit of the learning and being curious uh, to stitch together different components. So in one website, you might find how to create uh, Jenkins. In another website, you might find how to do uh, GitOps. And then in another website, you might find out what are some common errors, and then you need to stitch together. And sometimes the example could be with like a Python code, and then you need to deploy it for your Java code. Remember, cloud DevOps is still new and things are still evolving. So not every error, every challenge has been solved for. So at the end of the day, you have to go through the documentation, official reference guide, and then find out a way to do that. If you are someone who gets super frustrated and you want everything on your fingertips available so that you can just replicate that in your project, then Cloud DevOps might not be a good area. Reason number five, you will hate going into Cloud and DevOps if you hate making more money. Cloud and DevOps is literally the hottest thing right now. Uh, if you look at any job website, you will see hundreds of thousands of job positions. And you don't need to even learn the whole thing. You can pick and choose. A lot of the time folks think they need to master security, networking, compute, storage, Kubernetes, serverless infrastructure as code, all these areas to get a job. That's not true. If you like security, just study security. If you like uh, DevOps, just study more on the DevOps side uh, and then you will get a job. I have a separate video on what skills you should master for these separate cloud jobs. I'll give the link up top, so take a look. But yeah, going back, if you are someone who is like, you know what, I'm super comfortable, super uh, easy life in my current job, and yeah, I don't want to make uh, more money. Uh, it's, it's okay, more money is more problems. Then you probably hate going into cloud DevOps. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Are there any other reasons you can think people should avoid going into cloud DevOps? What do you think of this video? Any questions? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, also, if you found this video helpful, please click that like button. Smash it if that's something you are into. Uh, click the subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. Comment. Uh, each like and each comment help this video reach to new viewers, which help this channel grow. We are super close to 30,000 subscribers. So with your gentle click of a button, we might reach that goal by the end of this month. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.